Go get it. Hey, uh, wait, wait, let me ask you something. Yes. Before you get started. If there was one thing you really would like to work on here, I didn't do this with Gretchen. I'm sorry, Gretchen. Okay, sir. I should. If there's something you really want to work on here, what would it be? What do you want? My stomach. Okay. <laughs> all right. Hit the floor. I get all kinds of answers. So. Okay. I'm gaining a lot of weight here. This engagement's killing me. <laughs> you keep saying things on video that Debbie's going to oh, get you. Yeah. <laughs> Today, today we're going to talk about uh, another type of uh, variable value reducer. And you probably talked about a lot of different reducers before in some other classes, but these are the, the first ones that you're going to talk about that you can vary the speed on. Uh, and these are mechanical speed reducers. And just to give you an analogy of how these things work, if you think about your car, it, it, it can't possibly run at a constant speed, so you have to have a way to vary the speed of your automobile. And one of the ways is with the, by the RPMs of the engine, and the other way is uh, through the gearing and the transmission. Most of our other reducers use exclusively gearing to change the speed of a motor, and that's pretty common. If you had a conveyor belt that was running at, a, at the speed of a motor, 1,750 RPMs, for instance, without reducing that speed, you'd never be able to keep anything on it because it'd be running much too fast. So the purpose of reducers is to, is to reduce the speed of the motor so that you can uh, transmit these products. And our objective today is going to be to try to understand the role of uh, these variable speed mechanical drives and uh, process control for some of our industrial applications. And uh, there, there are electrical type drives probably study or you will study your uh, electrical um, electrical classes. Some of these aren't good for these applications because uh, the electrical drives aren't good in wet or moist applications or in hazardous applications or um, some nasty applications like in food and mining and these leaves drives are really good. Also uh, the, very, the uh, electrical drives have a tendency to, to bog down. If you've got, if you ever watched your ceiling fan, as an example, when you start it up, if you ever, I don't guess you ever would, but if you ever hold on to the ceiling fan and try to start it, you can actually bog the motor down and you can hear it. Why? Because it doesn't have enough torque to start up the motor against that motor. And these breeze drives are good in that respect uh, because they have up to eight times the startup torque uh, of an electrical drive. That's why we use the basic two types of drives are the ultimate and the motor drive. Um, they're both basically the same. The ultimate is a little bit larger and has a, a plastic bail uh, housing that is easily removed and you can do complete maintenance on the thing in about, in about three minutes. So that's another thing that people out for in the industry use these ultimate because they're easy to maintain. And uh, as I mentioned before, some of the industries that they're using are the food, mining, and petroleum industries where they're dusty, uh, hazardous, or um, damp environment. And then after lunch, we'll <laughs> talk about some other things. That get... That's it. Got it. Yeah. And you ended up not oh. using your display. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> this is what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> the Ultima and the Reeves. You can see they're both about the same. This one got the plastic housing. And Sorry about that. I just no, no, that's okay. That tells us something. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> no, no, no. I got. I, I'm videotaping you pushing that back in the room too. By the way, <laughs> if y'all will take a minute and, and fill out Robert's critique, and then I'll we'll make some inquiries with him. I'll let you. Stand up front and be uncomfortable for a little longer. Okay. I can clean this up too, I guess. Yeah. 
presentation number one, I trust? Presentation number one or two. That's, if you all want to consider the first one this morning as one, that's fine. That way it'll match up with the video if you want to. Make it two. Good point, Jewel. Man, I realize how out of shape I really am. This pushing that thing around has got me breathing hard. <laughs> that combined with the case of the nerves is pretty tough. Yes, it is. Robert, you mentioned the case of the nerves. What are you feeling? Well, I think when I first started, you know, I, I didn't really think much about it. And then all of a sudden when I looked at the camera, <laughs> I felt the same way Gretchen did. I felt, oh, you know, I was conscious about where my hands going and which way am I moving, which way am I looking. And I think I got more conscious of that. When, you, when your focus gets there, what happens? Well, I felt myself tightening up, you know, like, all of a sudden, I was breathless too, like the Gretchen was. Or, and I think a lot of hers was because she's lugging those pulleys around, but I can't blame the full extent of mine on that. I was really nervous. Okay. So. Is that something you'd like to work on over the course of the. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I guess the product knowledge too, because I kind of. I don't know hardly anything about these things other than what I deal with on a daily basis, you know. So. Sure. I'd like to learn a little bit more about how to present it to a group. Okay. Tell me, what did you like about what just happened for you? What went well for you? Um, well, about the only thing I think was clearly stated was the objective. <laughs> yeah, what we were kind of planning on doing, how to, how to show people how those things were um, relative to their application in the industry. So, okay. so you did like the yeah. how you laid it out? Kind of just winged, you know. So I was going to try to make a real good analogy between an automobile and a race drive, but that didn't come out quite as well as I hoped either. Oh, well, and that's good. I, if I'm going to experiment with something, I'd like to do it in here. Go ahead, try it out, and, and then ask your ask your peers what they thought of it. Does that work? In retrospect, probably a better example would have been a, a mixer or something. Okay. Because you, most people know what a mixer is at home, a small mixer. Mm hmm but they also use these things on great big industrial mixers. And if they stop them and they're full of dough, they're under full load, these things are great for starting them back it up. You can't really do that with an electrical drive. Okay, good, we're learning something. <laughs> if you did it, could do it over again, what would it be? Would it be that, your analogy? Yeah, or? I think so. All right. I think I've worked on that, polished it up a little bit, because I think people can make the transition a little easier mm -hmm. in their mind, from small to large, rather than automobile reducer. Okay. You know, I think it's a little easier transition than make. That's fine. Hey, help Robert out. What did you think of his presentation? I thought you seemed to be yeah. good eye contact. I was really eye contact. You uh, gave some good technical information, believe it or not. I mean, you didn't have much confidence in yourself after you said it. But you did. <laughs> spoke about the reducers as if you didn't know what you're talking about. And uh, I like the field comparison. I mean, you got a constant speed motor, you're going to go straight through a, yeah. a freeway at 1,750 RPM versus you know, controllable speed. So I thought that was good. Okay. Anything else? I thought you did a good job with your hands. You didn't use them too much. I hate people that go Italian, start throwing them everywhere. But then you also didn't just throw them up there once and go, just, you know, you did a good job of every 30 seconds or so showing it a different way and not using the same movement over and over again. I that was nice. Good feedback. Uh, I, it, it did. It did. Yeah. The camera makes it look smaller. I was hoping for it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what did, what, what recommendations? Any suggestions you have for Robert's presentation or? Mom was he could move around the room a little bit more instead of standing. Well, I want to stay in front of you. Oh. <laughs> I'm just the camera's not here. That's why we have to look at it. That's not here. So. Yeah, I need to move more. I know. I, I was conscious of that. I really was, but I was also really scared. I was trying to overcome that. 
I think this was a little bit of the case of the MERS you repeated a couple of times in the bottom line about the comparison with the Reeves and the Ultima. said the same thing a couple of times. Yeah. You probably want to approach these the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very good point. I thought it was very comfortable. I know it. I, it's sensed a little bit of the nerves towards the end. I didn't pick up on it in the beginning, but uh, if that's something you'd like to work on, we're going to talk about some techniques that can be beneficial there. I, I honestly, if you don't have a little bit of nerves, I'm, I'm worried about you. <laughs> well, I mean, I, like I say, I thought it was strange because at first I felt fine, but then it happened suddenly. Yeah. I was really, way I was real conscious all of a sudden the fact that the camera was there. I'm, not the people at all, but I couldn't get away from the camera. And I, yeah. It just happened suddenly. So. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do that for two days like that? That'd be tough, wouldn't it? It would be. I am so envious of people like Peter and uh, Scott. And I, I, they have really good delivery. I like that. I know there's not much I can do with it. I just have to work with what God has given me. So I'll have to go with the extreme good Is there, It's not a detriment. <laughs> it's not detrimental. It's it's the fact that you're conscientious of it that could be detrimental. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to be silly too, I guess. But. Seriously, what I'd really like to work on is to, uh, first time I've ever used the overhead, so I'm going to try to make this, uh, be able to manipulate this thing and blend it in, and I'm also going to use a whiteboard too. Oh, there you are. All right, so if you're going to use easels, all right, to make sure. <clears throat> to try to blend, to try to, I'm going to try to use both of them. Good. To make it flow. Yeah. First time for me, I'm kind of like Scott. I didn't know anything about this. Thursday, actually. Last Thursday. Okay. All right, so everybody knows what they're looking for? It's running. Whenever you're ready, sir. Well, I'm ready. Well, class yesterday, we talked about the race drives and some of the uh, uh, objectives that we're going to cover with the race drives. Our primary objective from yesterday, if you'll recall, I just messed that up, but we want to know the role of the race drives in process control of rings. And you probably studied a lot of different type, kinds of reducers so far. You studied torque arms and uh, master XL, maxims, and they all basically do the same thing, which is uh, reduce the speed of a process, reduce the speed of a motor. And you're probably wondering why do we have all these different kinds of reducers, and there's even more that you're going to study about than you and we have out now called Qantas. APGs, there's lots of different kinds of reducers. And I guess the easiest way to answer that is why do people drive so many different types of automobiles? Some people drive Corvettes. Some people are named Corvette, I guess. <laughs> 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 they don't necessarily drive what they're named. But, uh, some people do that. Now, they'll put their name on their car, too. It's their personality. Some people drive sport utility vehicles. Some people drive trucks. Why do people do that? Why do people drive different kind of automobiles? Preference. It's preference. That's right. It's application. It's preference. Uh, like people drive a truck because they may need a truck for certain things that they do in their life, maybe for their job. Some people might drive a Corvette simply because of preference. They like the way they feel. They like the way it performs. Reducers in the industry serve the same type role. Uh, you need different types of reducers for different types of applications. Some for strong, uh, difficult dirty, harsh environments, some that are more simple applications like Peter mentioned the other day, the conveyors in the grocery store, the actually conveyor application. You have to control the speed of that or everybody's groceries, like I mentioned, would be sitting out in the parking lot. <clears throat> How are some of the ways that we control speed reduction? Anybody got any ideas? Controlling the speed of the motor? one idea of that and, and the way that we do that um, we can control the speed of the motor the most common way is through an electronic device called a variable speed driver that you'll be studying about in the future and the way a variable speed drive works is uh, pretty simple it um, the drive itself basically reduces the amount of voltage to the motor 
and it's a good analogy is like a hose pipe. You take a hose pipe and you turn the water full of force, and you don't have a nozzle on the end of it, but you're holding the hose pipe. And then you start to crimp the hose pipe. And the more you crimp it, the less water comes out of the hose pipe. And therefore, the less, the less force, the less pressure, the less end result that you have. And a variable speed drive does exactly the same thing. It slows down the flow of current to the motor, which in turn makes it turn slower. Anybody else got any other ideas on how to reduce speeds on motors? <coughs> or an application, not necessarily a motor, but any application, how do you reduce the speed? Well, let's look at four ways. And there's certainly more ways than this, but four are the most common ways. And Peter touched on one is to control the speed of the control the speed of the motor. You want to control the speed of the motor with electronic controllers. Another way is to control speed is through gearing, like in the transmission of your automobile. There's gears in there. There's also bands that control that. <coughs> and you talk about driven gears and uh, driver gears and the number of teeth in them. Uh, and a gear, in a lot of ways, is like a sprocket. And uh, Scott has already talked to you in a previous class about shivs. All these sprocket shifts, gears, variable speed controllers, and combinations of these arrangements are how we control uh, speeds of our application. Now, the good thing about a reach drive that's different from any other thing you're going to study is that the reach drives employ both gearing and friction discs to accomplish speed reduction. So these friction discs look a lot like a shield. Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, if we talk about sprockets, I mean, really, what is a sprocket? Everybody's probably done this in their lifetime. How many have ridden a 10 speed bicycle or a 12 speed or 10 speed for me, but they have 12 speed speed, and everybody has. But basically, if you'll remember how that works, if, if you've got the front sprocket here that you're pedaling, you know. Actually, you may have two of them, one inside the other, and they've got little teeth on there, so imagine that there's teeth on this. And then on the back, you've got a series of sprockets, about five different sprockets, depending on the number of speeds. What actually happens is you, is you change, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stand in front of you, but as you move the position of the chain on these sprockets, you uh, increase or decrease the effective diameter that that chain has to travel and it causes a reduction in the speed of this back wheel um, and i think i got this right i'm not real sure <laughs> it actually reminds me of a long time since i've ridden one but there's some kind of big long drawn out mathematical formula that you can use to figure this up based on the number of teeth in the sprocket or gear or whatever <coughs> but you basically uh, Well, when you move from one sprocket to the next, you can, you can actually make the same number of revolutions with the pedal and get more or less revolutions out on the back here, and that's the whole principle behind the, the range drive. And I mentioned before that this thing employs both gear reductions and friction discs to accomplish this. And a shield, like Scott mentioned before, is, is simply a lot of you can relate to this. It's like a pulley. It's a, it's like a, it's a little thing here with a with a bushing in the middle, and a belt can ride on here. And the belt accomplishes basically the same thing as the sprocket. And if you if you have a motor sitting out here, for instance, and you have a shiv right here, a belt running on this shiv, and you have another application down here with a larger shift, then this one is going to be turning much slower than this one because of the effective diameter. And we'll get into this theory a lot more later on. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, now I want to sum it up. Why the Reeves product uh, that has a high starting power? 
easy maintenance, respectively low cost, and you can get variable speed out of this product, which is something I want you to remember. It's a variable speed mechanical device as opposed to uh, a variable speed electrical control or variable speed drive. Where do we use it? Food industry, dirty or harsh environments, applications requiring variations in speed. And then real briefly, I'll wrap this up. Uh, one of the, if you, how many of you have ever seen a uh, pizza being made? Or pick up a pizza from Little Caesars or something. There's a big oven there that they're running the pizzas through. This is one application where they use a reuse drive for sure, as an as example. Some people like thin crust pizza, and some people like the, the deep dish pizza. Well, obviously when you run that through there, they can't all go through there at the same speed or the deep dish wouldn't get done or the thin crust would be burned. So you have to have a way of varying that speed and with a normal reducer you can't do that effectively. At least things you can change the speed by varying the pitch of that fully that I didn't get into, but we'll cover that in our next class. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any questions? Did you accomplish what you wanted? I didn't realize the time was going away that much. You know, and I, I thought it would be a lot shorter than that. I kind of got long-winded. My artistry is a little bit off. I think I got hung up a little bit on trying to explain the theory of the sprockets and the shields because I kind of went blank on which one turns the fastest and my mind was racing trying to remember pedaling the bicycle which sprocket I was on when it was so I, 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 needed to, I needed to do a little more research on that. Those are good analogies, but yeah, thinking them through of how you would tie that to what you're talking about, I think that's a perfect way of doing it because most of us can relate to it. Yeah, I wanted to also make the, I mentioned the variable speed on the race drive, but I didn't explain how it works because they actually, the way they do it is vary the speed, the uh, width of the friction disc, which it actually changes. It's like a shield, but it changes the width of it, so I forgot to put that in there. I wish I had it. Do I you just need more, more practice, more circle around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, were you comfortable with the overhead? <coughs> um, it's hard for me to keep the plastic from slipping and moving. I, I had a lot of trouble with that, and then it seems like sometimes it'll get stuck right here, but I think, again, it's just a matter of working with it. Yeah. Yeah, even, and I'll say this is true with any media, and I don't know that I got into it very much yesterday. It gets, it gets to be a lot of information on there, and then when you were trying to cover, I, and y'all tell me what you like. Uh, do you prefer, do you prefer, as Robert did there, uh, exposing all elements of, let's say, the methods of speed reduction, or you, do you like it to be revealed an item at a time? I think he kind of had no choice because the one that Peter chose was the second one. He kind of wanted to show where it was at. And so I think, I, mean, I don't really have a preference, but I think the reason he showed them all could have been, maybe I'm reading too far. If that's the method you prefer to do, and I'm not telling you one over the other, I'm just asking you. If you do it, then I would recommend what Robert's done here is he's let it, he's identified them so that he can stand away and actually reference them. Well, let's look at the, what A is. Let's look at B. Let's look at C. So if you begin to do that in presentations, whether it's a PowerPoint or whether it's handwritten or whether it's a copy of if there's some way of referencing it, that's a good way. Then you're not, you're not having to stand over here you don't even have to go back here because you can always talk this from the side. I think too, I, I wouldn't do this this way in class, but I, I may use a backup system. I think I heard somebody say you can take PowerPoint and actually make slides. Yes. And I would do that in each one of these individual parts. It would probably be a different slide. And as a backup, I'd be able to, to transfer them about how I see.
side. I'm not the smoothest way to do that, but to work with, I'd probably, yeah, I'd, more preparation is definitely needed, and I probably need everything a, a whole lot, I'd make it more professional. Just didn't have the time to do it. What did you like about Robert's presentation, folks? Real life application. Anything else? Contrary to what he believes, he's got an instructor's voice. Why do you say that? Because he <laughs> sticks to his tray of thought. He flows with what he's looking at. He doesn't really get off the subject. Uh, he thinks beforehand, like the analogy, what can I show with this? Yeah, he admitted to being a little weak on the analogy as far as the comparison to the sprocket, etc. But he flowed with, okay, I'm looking at this, now I want to show him this. And he brought that verbal. He said, okay, this is, think about this while you're reading this, basically. So he, you know, kept the attention, I thought, focused on himself by speaking it through. Okay, good, good feedback. Like Scott said, I like the analogies, because we have to remember that these people are new and they haven't seen our product before. So all those analogies kind of put me Good. I think you have a t I, to kind of piggyback on what Jewel just said. So I think you have a tendency. That's the way you want to train people. You want to find that connection to people out there that, that this is new to them. And, and and let me let me. You can relate to this, can't you? And that's that's a great way to do things because again, they are new and they're going to get overwhelmed, just like Gretchen said. By the fourth week, how do you compare all this stuff? Yeah, I try to look at it from a perspective, and that was some of the questions that I asked. Why do you have so many different reducers to do the same job? And it took me a while to understand why. Well, now, if you can re always relate to those questions you had in your mind as you went through AT, then you, then that'll be your emphasis to be sure that you incorporate right. that in your That's kind of what I did, too. And Peter, uh, like I said yesterday, he made a, a real impact on me. He just showing me in real life examples of what, where these things existed and I, I remember it. I mean, I just really remember all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though I don't remember where to find the board sizes, I remember where to <laughs> find these products, you know, so that, that was important to me. Good stuff. Work with these. You know, what thing that I might recommend, I don't know if it's possible to find one of these things somewhere and have it mounted. You know, you think about it, what yeah. would it be to have a little display and you could take actually just sit there with with the pedal and just turn it and say, okay, what's the deray I do? Well, what is it that we can relate right. that to to a drive? And I think people will start to make the connection because it's hard to see that in the device because it's usually housed and it's got a housing right and mm -hmm. you don't see it. So you got to look and, and find what, what will work for you. Yeah, I think that would be a good uh, visual aid. Matter of fact, I'll probably end up trying to come up with something like that, or, or maybe <laughs> push comes to shove, I'll bring my old bicycle. Yeah, you can easily do that. And I need everybody to come up and say, okay, I know you've seen this a thousand times, but I need you to relate this to what we're talking about today. This is a reason underground, and this is how it's applied. It's a simple concept. You've seen it all your life, but... You can also see the ratios, you really. I mean, they're not different sprockets. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. One thing I'd be careful with, this is true for all of us, is while you were here, this thing had a death grip. Yeah, I know, I finally put it down. I, after put it down. I realized it after, after a while. And I, 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 you know, I, I don't know if I sensed tension in you from doing that. And Gretchen set us up that she's going to do it. She's still rubbing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's tension there, and that, that might have just lessen our effect. Thinking that you're at ease doing this. Right. Your voice, as Peter says, you're comfortable to listen to. This is natural. It's not stoic. It's not harsh. It's not, I'm better than you. It's, I'm one of you. Kind of voice. And I think that that works better. Little things like that. Okay. All of us. And we'll, let's, let's make it. We spent a long time this morning on. Bit more, not a lot, but a little bit more because I think I'm going to use that. What's your stretch behind there? 
board that you're going to want us to work with? <laughs> Just kind of, I mean, you don't have to tell us. Yeah, you don't have to tell I'm us exactly what you. I want to also work on um, feedback and participation from the group. I want to try to incorporate that a little bit more into what I'm doing. Good. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, not ready whenever you're on. You're on. Well, uh, my name's Robert Spillers, and I'm the backup instructor for the Reeves drives. Uh, our regular instructor couldn't be with us today, but I'm going to take up the last leg of this program, and uh, we're basically going to summarize what you have already studied, some of the things you've already learned. So our primary objective today is really simple. It's understanding. We, I want to gauge how much you've learned from the sessions before. Uh, and at the same time, I want to just reiterate the fact that we're in a team environment upstairs, and a lot of the things that we're going to go over uh, relating to understanding, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. You know, and, and you can look at understanding uh, in two different ways. One way is uh, the things that you understand because of uh, instruction and feedback, you can understand that because of your own mental abilities or, or because of the abilities of the instructor. And that's what we're here to gauge today. How much did you pick up? How much did you understand? The other uh, aspect of understanding is I want you to understand as new employees to the company that some things that happen to you are beyond your control, uh, beyond your mental control, beyond your physical control. Um, so we're going to play a game. <laughs> and this game, I hope, will demonstrate both of, uh, both of these things. Uh, the game is going to be pretty simple. Uh, and the girls are going to have a game. <laughs> oh, my. The girls will have an advantage because uh, there's one more lady than there are uh, gentlemen in the room. And the game's pretty simple. Uh, I talked about some of the Reeves drives and some of their applications. And we know that a Reeves drive is a variable speed mechanical drive. And we know that it's some of the uh, areas that it's used in. So what I want to demonstrate with this game is that uh, I want to know how much you learned as I've probably beat to death already. <laughs> and I also want to show you that some things that happened are completely beyond your control. So with that in mind, what I'd like for you to do, and I, I'd like, like for the ladies to go first, is to tell me an application uh, where a Reeves drive might be used. Food industry. Okay. And he, Pizza Hut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Well, uh, this other guy mentioned that earlier <laughs> in another presentation of how this thing might be used in the pizza industry. So that would be a point for the girls. So they, they've got one point. And now I'd like to ask the guys if they could uh, think of another application where we could use the Rouge Drive. On top of a beer vat mixer. That's the best uh, good application. <laughs> 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 so now the score is tied. I can give the ladies one more turn. And the guys one more turn. We're going to have two turns each. And you guys can work together if you'd like. Uh, what specifically in a bakery? Uh, a bakery uh, That's true. Like if you're making cookies, and some cookies were this big and some were that big, you know, you'd have to vary the speed. So that's another good point for the girls. So now you guys have two points. And this is just, uh, the girls have two points. And this is the guy's opportunity to do either tie or potentially lose. So what do you think, guys? One more application. Punch press. Punch press. Yeah, I can see that where that the high torque application that you would need at the very beginning. So we've got a pretty strange thing that's happening here. Uh, we have time. So to demonstrate the next thing to you that uh, some things are beyond your control, and that's what I was mentioning earlier. One minute. I need one volunteer from the group, a one female and one male. Okay, the bet. I'll take you on, sister. <laughs> this is pretty simple. Each one of you is going to get one tug at this screen. <laughs> and we'll take turns. And the first one to successfully raise this thing is the winner of the game. <laughs> so you don't really have to do that. Ladies first. <laughs> 
<laughs> one toe, okay. but just one. Yeah! Hey, we have a winner. No, 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 wait a minute. It's not all the way up. Not all the way up. Try. Scott, go for the gut. Let me finish it off for you. Go for the gut stuff. No, no, pull it back all the way down to where it was so it's a fair. Is that washed for you? Sure. I couldn't do this. It's a my presentation. Oh! 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 Okay, time. <laughs> oh, no, it was on tape. <laughs> yeah, but it's not yours. <laughs> that makes it worse. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm going to make a lot of money with the copies. <laughs> <laughs> we see what side, you got to get on your feminine side there. There it is. Tell me, tell me a little bit, did you accomplish what you wanted to? I think so. I, I ran out of time. Tell me your objectives real quick again. There were two you listed. The, the only two objectives I wanted to show was I wanted them to, to come to understand, to be able to regurgitate what they had assimilated through the training so okay. far. And the second was to simply show that some things, no matter how hard you try, are be under control. All right. Did that, did both points come out in your activity? I think so. I got, I got some feedback on the application of the race drive from, from both the ladies and the, the men. All right. I gave everybody an opportunity to, to talk, and I think they were very participating. Okay. And I couldn't think of any other way to show in, in this setting other than, than with the screen, you know, that some things are just beyond your control. It's not necessarily whether you win or lose sometimes, but it's how, how you play. That's pretty corny, but I guess it's, it's just a game. Sometimes All right. You have to do the best you can with what you have. Did you like it? Did you like doing this? Yeah. If you had to do over again, is anything you'd change? I think if I had more time to prepare, I could probably come up with some better scenarios. Okay. Gretchen? Can I piggyback on that for a minute? I, I guess I was thinking you were going to share with us what an example of what might not be in your control from the Reeves motor drive standpoint. Uh, you know, or any, you may experience this in anything. Now, can you relate that to Reeves motor drive where it's out of your control, both the ability you have there or maybe what you don't have knowledge of right now? Even with the use of this, could I tie that activity back to the Reeves motor drive? Then, then uh, it would have probably really made a real strong point of things that can happen that are in, either in your control or outside of your control. And I don't think I think that's a good point to bring up. That upstairs, these things aren't going to always move very smoothly, quickly. That you are still in an educational period, but. Right now, these are in your control, these may not. I think you had a, your comfort level to me was maybe assured that you knew where you were going. So even if you didn't have much time to prepare, it's, I had a sense that you had what you wanted to do. Now again, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. And if it does, great, build it into your activities. If it doesn't, they don't have to know it. You chalk it up in your head, move forward. And that's something we all can do. Thank you very much, Robert.